Hi, welcome to Trails from Hell. I'm Joe Dante. Today we're going to class up the joint with a Shakespeare picture. Not one of those old Vic Shakespeare movies, but a Hollywood one made in 1935 by Warner Brothers. It happens to be one of the most incredibly beautiful black and white movies ever made. Uh, it's also notable as the Shakespeare movie with the credit, Additional Dialogue by Sam Taylor. It's a Midsummer Night's Dream. When the acclaimed Austrian stage director Max Reinhardt fled to America to escape the Nazis, he was called upon to stage one of his great successes, A Midsummer Night's Dream, as Shakespeare Under the Stars at the Hollywood Bowl in 1934. In the audience of that star-studded affair were Jack Warner and his right-hand man, Hal Wallace, who convinced Warner to produce the show as a high-end feature film. As Reinhardt didn't speak English, he had to be paired with director William Dieterle as co-director. The picture was a success, but Reinhardt never made another film. The result was one of the strangest and most beautiful films ever to come out of Hollywood, a fantasy film for the ages, starring the most unlikely cast that Shakespeare ever saw. Among the crew of contract players and low comedians, James Cagney stands out as Bottom the Weaver, who spends much of the time in a pretty cool donkey head. Cagney, who often complained about typecasting, throws himself into the role with boundless energy and agility, but he wasn't the first choice for the role. Both W.C. Fields, unavailable due to his role in David Copperfield, and Guy Kibbe, who was a popular character actor at the time, were considered. But luckily, Cagney got the role. This was Olivia de Havilland's first film at 18, her name misspelled in the credits. But the Pulchritude Award goes to the impossibly dreamy Anita Louise as the fairy queen Titania. 13-year-old Mickey Rooney drives some people up the wall with his unbridled take on Puck, which amazingly, he played with a broken leg. Victor Jory is a formidably scary Oberon. Over the years, the picture was reissued in various versions, and only recently has it been restored to its original 132-minute running time, sans overture and intermission. But the real star is cinematographer Hal Moore, who made alterations to Reinhardt's soundstage forest, containing half the trees in Griffith Park, sprayed them with aluminum paint, and added cobwebs with reflective particles. The result is simply one of the greatest-looking black-and-white movies ever. But Moore wasn't nominated for an Academy Award, some say due to his activism in a 1933 strike. Nonetheless, he won the award anyway, via write-in vote, the first and only time that's ever happened with the Academy Awards, and they made sure that it never happened again. <laughs>